My veteran is my dad, Paul. He was in the United States Marines. My veteran is my dad, Jerry. United States Air Force. My veteran is my grandfather, also Jerry. United States Navy, World War II. Today, on Veterans Day, Remembrance Day, I wear this in honor of him. And I wear this in honor of my father. Hey! Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Hi, welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Thank you so much for being here today on Veterans Day here in America and Remembrance Day in the United Kingdom. Before we get started with today's video, um, we just showed you our veterans in our lives. They're long, longer with us, unfortunately. Um, but we want to take a moment to thank you. This is from our hearts. Um, we wear these poppies with pride. And um, we wear these shirts with pride for our country and for your country, for all the allies of the United States of America, yes. the land that we hold so dear and treasure to our hearts, and you along with it. We thank each and every one of you, veterans, active service members of the military, the United States, and all of the allies. So thank you from the bottoms of our hearts, our souls, for the ultimate sacrifice to make sure we are free. Yes. Thanks for fighting alongside us and us alongside you. We do have a special relationship and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The military is a single most important thing because that is the, again, the most ultimate sacrifice. To put your life on the line for myself. For me for your families, mm -hmm. for the world. So we want you to know that on this Remembrance Day, this Veterans Day, we see you, even though we can't see you. We mm -hmm. do see you. We hear you. We thank you from the bottoms of our heart. Thank you for your service. We don't need to do like buttons today or subscribe buttons today. We take this day very seriously and um, <clears throat> honor you. And our family members that have left us, we wanted to take a look at the unknown warrior story. We thought that would be mm -hmm. a very fitting thing for today. Yes. Um, of course, you know, we have the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier here in America, and there's quite a few places that do. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't know the story fully of yours and uh, the situation, all that. So we want to learn about the whole thing. And uh, we thought that would be the perfect thing to do for this day. This is the unknown warrior story by the bands, um, the mass bands of Her Majesty's Royal Marines. Um, this is from 2021. And uh, this was at the um, Royal Albert Hall. And we're very excited to learn about this and share it with you. If you've seen it, I'm sure you'll want to see it again. If you haven't, I have a feeling this is gonna blow your socks off. I have a feeling it's gonna blow our socks off. Yes. Ready for it? Absolutely. All right, so let's do this and learn about the Unknown Warrior story. Why the band, <sighs> bands of the Royal Marines. By the end of the Great War, the human cost meant that nearly every family from around the British Empire had suffered losses. Many of the fallen remained unidentified, resting in war graves far from home. One man's determination to honor these brave men led to the story of the Unknown Warrior. Hmm. 
In 1916, Reverend David Railton, while serving as an army chaplain on the Western Front, had seen a small wooden cross marking a grave with the words, an unknown British soldier. He later wrote, how that grave caused me to think. I thought and thought, what can I do to ease the pain of father, mother, brother, sister, sweetheart, wife and friend? Mm. Quietly and gradually there came out of the mist of thought this answer, clear and strong. Let this body, this symbol of him, be carried over the sea to his native land. Amen. After writing to the Dean of Westminster, Herbert Ryle, in 1920, he proposed that a British soldier known only to God be laid to rest in Westminster Abbey amongst the kings. Yeah. This was to represent the many thousands that never returned. The proposal was met with enthusiasm and so began the journey of bringing this unknown warrior back where he belonged back home. I'm not going to pause much. Please, if you have a veteran, drop their name in the comments. Yes. Honor your veteran today. Put them in the comments of this video. We'd like to know their name, branch of their service, where they're from, what country they are in. Doesn't matter where. Yes. That way we can all remember them. We'd like to do that. Thank you. On the evening of the 7th of November, 1920, the remains of four unidentified soldiers, one from each of the four main battlefields, were placed in the chapel at Saint-Paul-sur-Ternoise, near Arras in France. Brigadier Wyatt and Lieutenant Colonel Gell of the Directorate of Graves Registration and Inquiries entered the chapel alone. The four coffins were draped in Union flags and indistinguishable from each other. With eyes closed, Brigadier Wyatt rested his hand on one of the coffins. The selection of the unknown warrior mm. was made. Coffin stayed at the chapel overnight, and on the afternoon of the 8th of November, it was transferred to the medieval castle within the ancient citadel at Boulogne. A Légion d'honneur en masse kept a vigil overnight. The following morning, the coffin was placed in a casket of oak timbers of trees from the grounds of Hampton Court Palace and placed onto a French military wagon. At 10.30 a.m., all the church bells of Boulogne tolled, and the mile-long procession led by 1,000 local school children, escorted by a division of French troops, made a solemn march to the harbor.
the quayside, Marshal Foch saluted the casket before it was carried up the gangway of the British destroyer HMS Verdun. Just before noon, HMS Verdun slipped anchor and, with an escort of six battleships from the Atlantic fleet, crossed the English Channel to Dover. Royal, the bands of the Royal Marines, man, yeah. they're getting me. Yeah, they are absolutely amazing, incredible. I wish we had a way to reach them, to thank them personally. Mm, that would be nice. Oh man, that'd be a dream. <laughs> um, it's just absolutely moving, so moving. The music, oh, along yeah. with the images, to see this and to hear this is just. How do you pick just one? I know that's how it worked. How yeah. do you do that? I mean, yeah, that must have been a hard choice. I can't make. imagine. I know one of our unknown soldiers was um, identified later on. I don't know if you're aware of that. No. I and um, was buried with his name and things like that. Okay. So that is cool. I don't know if that's ever happened um, other places. I would assume so, probably. Amazing. Precious cargo arrived at Admiralty Pier, Dover, to a 19-gun salute fired from Dover Castle. It was placed in utility van number 132, and at 5.50 p.m. on the 10th of November, it began its three-hour train journey to Victoria Station. He's going home. He is one of the lucky ones to go home. He's going home. Where he belongs. Mm -hmm. That it's is so honor. beautiful. It, mm. oh, man, thought I could horn in. You guys know I cry all the time. <laughs> I don't cry all the time. This just, is very touching. This very. is amazing. And again, the Royal Marines yeah. Band. Mass Band of the Royal Marines. Mm -hmm. Amazing. The way that, oh, this is done. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is more. I knew this was going to be good. I know this is going to be this great. Yeah, the music makes it that much more touching. But he's going home. You know, just that just, oh, God. We are very proud to be allies. I hope you know that. I hope it shows.
Victoria Station. Arriving at Platform 8 at 8.32 p.m. and now regarded as a national symbol, the representative of the thousands who made the ultimate sacrifice, the unknown warrior, was greeted by a guard of honor and a large, silently respectful crowd. A plaque marks the site, and every year on the 10th of November, a small remembrance service organized by the Western Front Association takes place between platforms eight and nine to honor and pay respects to this most significant of arrivals. Love it. It remained there overnight under escort until interment at Westminster Abbey the following day. On the morning of the 11th of November, the coffin was placed on a gun carriage drawn by six black horses from the Royal Horse Artillery. Huge crowds had gathered as the carriage traveled between lines of troops, their heads bowed and rifles reversed for the short journey from Victoria Station to Westminster Abbey. It's kind of, you know, very, um, you know, it represents so many. And I can just imagine how all the mothers and fathers that had lost someone, wondering, yeah. it, was that their son? Oh, I was thinking that too. Yeah. Or their brother, you know. Or their husband. Yeah. Their dad. Yeah, and to be treated with such honor. Respect. The way it should be. The way it yes. should be. And seeing the, the, the soldiers standing there, mm -hmm. saluting, that kills me every time I see anything like that. Yeah. We can do this. We can get through this. Thousands came to pay their respects, lining the route as the carriage drew past, heading towards the Cenotaph, a hugely symbolic national shrine commemorating the 1.1 million British and Empire dead of the First World War and celebrating its centennial year. Representing an empty tomb, it immediately caught the public imagination, becoming a powerful focus for the grief of a nation and to honor the fallen the glorious dead. Over a million people visited in the first week, and wow. as Big Ben That's chimed 11 o'clock, a two-minute silence fell throughout the capital, throughout the land, across the empire and on the seas, before the cenotaph was unveiled after the haunting notes of the last post rang out. Beautiful.
After the unveiling, the king placed his wreath of red roses and bay leaves on the coffin. His card read, in proud memory of those warriors who died unknown in the great war, unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, they live. Known only to God. The cortege comprising the escorting pallbearers and followed by the king, the royal family and ministers of state continued to Westminster Abbey. Arriving at the north door of the abbey, it was flanked by a guard of honor of 100 recipients of the nation's highest military honor, the, the Victoria, Victoria Cross. Cross. Coffin of the Union Warrior entering Westminster Abbey, draped with the Union Jack on which rests a steel helmet. It's beautiful. With with the you know the Marines in the background playing the music, it's just like how can you you don't have a soul if you don't shed a mm. tear. Um, yeah. And then being buried with kings and queens, like that is the way it should be, right there. Yeah. That is that is absolutely the yeah. so honorable. I mean. <laughs> I don't always have the words, folks. <laughs> As you know. Don't always need words. The congregation settled and the choir sang. 100 women selected from the 15,000 who had lost a husband and one or oh, more man. sons, bereft with emotion, took their place, and as the dean began to conduct the service, cries of mourning echoed around the abbey. The procession made its way to the grave carefully removing the wreath, sidearms and helmet and the Union flag and lowered the coffin into the grave. After the Lord's Prayer, the hymn Abide With Me was sung with spirit and heartfelt emotion as the burial service came to a close. Servicemen from the armed forces stood guard as tens of thousands of mourners on a scale never seen before filed silently past the unknown warrior to pay their respects. The identity of the unknown warrior will rightly never be known. He represents the son of every mother, the husband of every wife, the brother of every sister, killed in the great war and every war. 
those whose loved ones were amongst the unknown, know that in this tomb there may be, there is, resting the body of their beloved, and with it brings the hope and joy of many thousands, knowing that this body, this symbol of him, will always be remembered then, now, and forevermore, as the unknown warrior is finally home. So touching. Um, I'm really glad we covered this. Um, it was really good to have the story, the um, band music in the background. That I think that just brought extra emotion to it. It's an emotional story to begin with. Uh, man, with the band playing, just really kind of hits it home. Yeah. I actually get speechless sometimes. Um, please, if you have a veteran, someone you've lost, mention them in the comments. We'd like to see their name. Um, if you have a child, a husband, a friend that's serving currently, mention them in the comments. We'd like to see their name. This was amazing. Um, there aren't profound enough words to really give a reaction to this. Yeah. You've seen our reaction, and that is not one that words are going to really do. I, you guys know that we care about the military deeply. Um, so there isn't a lot to say here. But at the same time, there is one thing that has already been said. It can't be said enough. And that is, thank you. Yes. They're not enough words. Those words aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, saying thank you for your service. It seems like it's just so. Seems trivial, but it's very heartfelt. Yeah. And, it yeah, means, there's really no other way to say it. No, because you can't say words for actions. So. Yeah. <sighs> um. I, I just I can't I can't thank those enough that that have served like I said and those that are currently serving. Um, again, I, I, I thank you to our American um, brothers and sisters that that serve with pride, mm -hmm. our great nation. Thank you to everyone in the United Kingdom. Again, all the allies. I'm not trying. I, don't, I will mess up if I try to do every country, and I'm not. I just please understand that we are all encompassing here. Um, and again, to the purple poppy that you see us wearing. Thank you, Karen. Um, the soldiers that were also four-legged. Mm -hmm. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that if you didn't see this already or know the story, you learned something, let us know that you, if you did. Mm -hmm. Please let us know if you did. Um, <clears throat> I learned a lot. Yeah, I um, did too. I know Queen Elizabeth, God rest her soul, mm -hmm. um, did visit the Tomb of the Unknown Warrior mm -hmm. um, at least once a year. And brought a wreath of poppies. Yeah. 
and, and laid it there. Um, and God bless her for doing that. Thank you for watching this. Um, you know, I, I have to just say it again. God bless the military. God bless America. And God save the king. We mean that. We love you guys. We hope we really, really love you guys. We will be back on Sunday, um, which I know it's Remembrance Day. Sun Remembrance Sunday. Yes. And we'll be doing something else. Um, kind of similar, but not really. <laughs> yeah. But join us for that as well. My birthday's tomorrow. Uh -huh. Happy and, birthday. Um, thank you. I uh, can't say it till tomorrow, but I, I'm thankful to um, have seen this today. That'll make my birthday more special. So thank you. Well, if ever again there's a time to say it, it always yeah. makes its way in here and it always, it, it always is so true. Yes, definitely. Please, guys, love like jazz. And be as strong as Tyson. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you all. God bless you. Bye. Bye.